the only man that's got the same move with every club. I'm the only golfer with the feeling of greatness. I'm the only golfer living that's got the master move and the feeling of greatness. Hey, it's Todd Graves, and welcome to the Feeling of Greatness podcast. Today, I have so much to talk about what's going on here at Graves Golf, and I am, I don't know, I don't know if I've ever been more excited about everything that we have, that we're doing here at at Graves Golf, and and look, I gotta, I gotta really uh, give a shout out to the entire Graves team, um, you know, being led by Thomas Purvis, our COO who has, who works tirelessly with the team. And all, I mean, we, we have such a great team that's, that's behind the scenes doing so much to make everything happen for, for you guys out there who are loving the single plane swing and, and into the Mo Norman single plane swing and, and loving the, the content we're producing and the, the information we put out and the instruction and the golf schools. And my big project has been the Graves Golf Performance Center, which started construction a few weeks ago, and it's the dirt's just flying out there, and and we just can't wait to get into the new facility and have a, a home for 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 this mission we're on to help the entire world simplify the game of golf and play better golf and have more fun, and that's what we're doing, and it's so exciting to see it all coming together. Um, I'm impatient as hell. I, I, I was out there this morning talking to my architect going, are, are we done with this yet? I mean, I just want to see this thing, but it's, it is fun to watch the process of, uh, you know, trees being moved around and, and uh, elevations and slopes and fairways going in and greens being built and dirt being pushed and tee boxes being built and buildings going up and crazy. It's, it's a, uh, it's a dream come true really. But and I want to thank all of, all of you out there who are, are a part of, of what we're doing here in the mission of Graves Golf. And uh, uh, thank you for being a part of everything that we're doing. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. And I, I hope we're, we're adding some quality and value to your life. And my mission is to continue to do that with all that we're doing. Today, um, I've, been, I've been having some deep thoughts and I thought I would kind of take you down a rabbit hole a little bit today. I, um, I, said, I think I said in a recent podcast, or I don't know if it was on a, a webinar, I said, I said, I don't know how to motivate people. And it was kind of a comment I made. And I remember getting some people were, were saying, well, Todd, you, you know, you're, you're a motivational person and, and you tend to motivate people, but I still don't consider myself a motivator. But I started thinking pretty heavily about this, not not in the sense of, hey, I want to go motivate more people because I still don't think that that I am capable of doing that. But I started thinking about what motivates me. And I started kind of doing a deep dive into well, how, what motivates anybody, right? What's, what motivates you? What motivates anybody out there who aspires? And I'm, I'm, I'll use that word aspire, but we're going to come back to that. What, what's the motivating factor? And here, here's what I kind of been thinking about what I kind of came up with is one of my rules. And by the way, this wasn't a rule that I had throughout my life. It's a, it's a rule that I've evolved into is I'm very particular about who I surround myself with and who I spend time with. And that's not to say that I don't socialize with strangers. It's, it's the point of quality time with people and who are, who's, who are the circles that I run with in. And I, I'm particular about that, but here, here's why I, I think this circles back to motivation because I tend to surround myself with people that hold me to a high standard. So, in other words, I like people around me that, that push me to be a better version of me and hold me accountable and call me out when I'm not being accountable to my own missions and visions. So think about that for a minute. And, and so what motivates me and what keeps me motivated is almost, it's almost a promise I've made to the people around me and a commitment they've made to me to hold me to a level that's a better version of myself and not let me do, do things or be a version that's not uh, something that's good for me or is growing me to be a better version of myself. That's where the coaching conversation really comes in for me. And, and so back 
when I circle back around my relationship with Mo, because in the last podcast, we talked some about that. Mo said to me, believe in yourself. That was, that was a quote. That was like the first thing he said to me when I, when I met him and believing in yourself, I'm going to, I want to talk, I'm going to break that down a little bit because this is where I, this is where I, sp- I spend time on airplanes and I, I don't like talking to people on airplanes. I like to sit there and, and meditate and, ha- you know, get into, I, I, I'll, I'll watch some inspirational speakers and things, but I just like to kind of have that time because I'm kind of locked away on that airplane. I spend that time to kind of get into the mental aspects of my own growth. And when, when I thought about that, believe in yourself, the word self mattered because the second thing Mo said to me is use your imagination. Um, and he, he would talk, he would use the word imagination consistently with me. And if you put those two things together, believe in yourself and imagination, here's what you, here's where you end up. If you imagine a higher version of yourself, or a, a, if you can picture, because imagination is painting a picture of a future vision. If you can create a, a, a future vision of yourself and believe in that vision, then you can't help but work everything in your life towards it. And then if you surround yourself with people, if people understand that's your vision and who you are and it's, it embodies who you are, then the people around you support that vision of yourself. You kind of see where I'm going with this. And I'm not here to give you recommendations or tell you how you should run your life. But if you, if, here, here's, where I, here's a question I have for you out there who are listening to this and, and maybe many of you are over the age of 60 and I'm approaching 60. And you're, and you're at this point in your life where you've accomplished a lot, you've done a lot, you've, you've basically, you've done so much in your life to get to where you're at. What's your next, what standard can I hold you to? What's your next high standard, right? Is it better health, better fitness? Is it a better golf game, all the above? Is it a better relationships? What, what it, you got to ask yourself, what, how can you raise your standards for those future things for you? I think the enemy of that thinking is complacency. I think the enemy is um, acceptance that, well, it's just the way things are. I think, and I'm not, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Sometimes acceptance is, it's a peaceful way to be. But if you... And you got to have fun with the aspiration of this creation and this imagination that you've created. And then you got to surround yourself with the people that support it. And then you watch how this, and, and look here, here's the deep conversation. Watch how the universe starts putting the puzzle together for you. It just will f- start, you know, you'll, you'll, let's just take some examples. And I, I can give you personal examples of this. Look, the whole, the whole meeting of Mo is that exact example. It's not that I didn't put effort into it, but I literally saw Mo on a video. I had heard of this guy. And then all of a sudden from go from that video to, I need to find out more to, I showed up and this is kind of a, this is kind of a really, I mean, this is how it all kind of works. The friend of mine, comes back from playing in Canada, has a videotape of Mo Norman. He shows me this tape and I'm like, wow, that swing is, that's, that's a perfect planed golf swing. I've got to figure out that makes so much sense. That next month I'm at a driving range in Dallas, Texas, and the founder of natural golf shows up who started talking about Mo Norman. So this synchronicity of events that comes together. And then I end up going with this company, natural golf and meeting Mo in Chicago. And it, this, this, this whole thing just evolved into what it is today from this idea and this me imagining a higher level standard for my golf game into a simpler way to play into a meeting Mo Norman into now we are Mo Norman. 
look, I don't know. I don't, I don't have the secrets to the universe and I don't, I don't know how this plays a part, but I do know it started with me imagining and me having a thought and that thought led into a, a picture of the future and that picture of the future leads to a brighter future. And then people gather around that idea. One of the things that the other day I was, I was just driving down the road and, and I was like, wow, I got, there's so many thoughts going through my head and so much stuff you can think about. There's so many distractions and there's so many things there's. And I said, I'm going to, I just pulled the car over to the side of the road and I said, you know what? I'm going to spend the next few moments here and I'm just going to stop thinking. I'm just going to stop. Like, let's just stop every bit of chatter in my mind. So I pulled over and I'm kind of sitting the side of the road. It took me a while to kind of stop thinking because I'm thinking about not thinking. It was really weird, but here we go. You know, this whole meditation thing. And all of a sudden my, it kind of, what, ha- what was weird, the weird part of this was that when I finally got to the point where my mind was quiet and I had stopped really the chatter, I became more aware of everything around me. And it, it became more beautiful. Like I, I, I saw the sky and I saw what was around me. I'm like, wow, we miss out. I miss out on so much stuff because of this chatter in my head all the time. So one of the things that I think as, as we think about our futures and we got to be careful what we think about and we got to be careful about how, what we imagine and we got to be, we got to use our minds to create that bigger future. And the enemy of all of this, cause I, I had a lot of, of contemplation about this as well is fear is, is because here's what happens. There's, there's, there's that little guy on your shoulder on one side. That's, that's telling you about the bad crap that can happen. And then you got the guy on the other side of your shoulder that's saying, go for it. And, and these are the two levels of, you know, these, these, and, and I think you got to take this guy that that's always, I'm not saying he's, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a, a check system in your life. That's like puts you in check once in a while, but, but you gotta, you, it depends what voice is louder. It's, is the, is the guy over here that's screaming at you, don't do it, be afraid, be safe, don't take any risks, don't, don't, you know, everything's hard, it's difficult. And then you got this guy on the other shoulder, it's like, just go for it, you know, get, get in the right situation, just go for it, don't worry about things, just, it's all going to work out, you know, follow your plans. Which voice is louder in your head? And I started looking at, man, which voice is louder? And whatever voice is louder is the one that you tend to follow. So my opinion about where you go with this and as a coach and, and somebody that, that, that wants to inspire people to have a higher standard for their golf games and higher standard for their living, have better quality of life, enjoy when they get out of bed in the morning, having, having this, in, in being inspired to have great moments. Because if you think about it, let's just be honest. How many moments do we have left? Let's just be honest about it. I mean, it's, 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 it's realistic, right? Okay. Well, let's go have, let's not only have as many great moments as we can, but let's help others have great moments and let's, let's further our, let's raise our standards. And, and here's, here's where, it, here's where it comes down to, because I feel obligated to live at a high standard it's not for me all the time because I, that's, I have a hard time with that, that selfishness of, Hey, everything is for me. I, I don't, I don't resonate well with that. But what I do resonate well with is the thought of, Hey, if I'm living my best life and I've raised my standards and, and I'm accountable to that high standard for myself, it's better for everybody that's around me. And it's also better if I hold other people to high standards. It doesn't do anybody any good if I let them not live at a high standard. But I can help them and I can, I can, I can motivate them in a way to show them and imagine for them what their bigger future is. Because maybe they're listening to that, that, that 
guy on their shoulder that's telling him to be afraid. And maybe I can help, you know, knock that guy off his shoulder once in a while and say, Hey, no, your future is over here. This is your higher standard. And so here's, here's kind of how I want to wrap this conversation up because, because recently we were, I was working with Trent White, one of the, one of the master coaches here at Graves Golf and Trent and I have lots of conversations and such a great coach. And Trent's, Trent's just very, 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 very good um, at, at helping people and motivating people and getting people on the right path with the golf swing. He's just that skilled. And we are getting some guys on single point Academy that were talking about being frustrated. And I thought to myself, okay, here's the, here's the, here's the conversation I want to have. And any of you, we've all experienced frustration. So I, I've, I've been there. It's not like I didn't get frustrated when I was, you know, developing my game or working with Mo. But I think there's something we have to really, really talk about here when it comes to when we raise our standards and we start really, let's say, working on our golf swings, we want to develop our golf swings to a higher level. What we're willing to do to get to that next level. So here's my question. Let's say, and I'll just use an example. Let's say that you're a decent golfer, but you want to improve. So let's say you're, you play, you're, you shoot 85. Okay. So yeah, it's good golf. It's not great, but you really want to raise your standards up to be a really, really good golfer. Let's say you can't even sit out only be a scratch golfer. So, okay, great. And then, and your left hand grip is making it difficult for you to square the face. Let's say it's closing the face down. And, and so we have to start with just your left hand position. I'm just using this as an example. And so I change, I put your left hand in a perfect place or Trent or one of our coaches put your hand. And so we have it in a perfect position where it's like ideal matches the model perfectly planes, the club face. And all of a sudden you can't hit the golf ball anymore. That new left hand position feels so weird to you and you're topping the golf ball and you're hitting behind it and you can't square the face and you just, you just, you can't even make contact with the ball. Here's my question. Did you get worse or did you get better? Think about that for a minute. Did you get worse or did you get better? And so what you realize really quickly is perspective. It's a hundred percent perspective. If you're, if you are living up to your higher standard of having a better golf swing, then you got better. If your standard is, well, I want to make sure I can make contact with the ball, that lower standard, because you, you, you want to improve that, right? You're going to go back to what's comfortable so you can make contact with the ball again and, and keep hitting those, you know, inconsistent shots because it's safe. And that little guy on your shoulder that thinks you're safe, that says, man, I don't, I don't want to screw everything up. I, I, I I'm, I'm, you have to decide. And this is, this is where you need people holding you to a high standard. It's, it's not to me, it's not okay to say, yeah, go back to your old grip and keep, I, I don't want, I don't want you to get worse. You know, I, I'd want you to, I, I don't work like that. And I, and the example I just gave you about left-hand grip is exactly what I experienced when I learned most swing. When I was working with him and sometimes he would help me and move me around and he would put me in positions. There was positions he put me in where I'm like in my little guy on my shoulder said to me, there is no way you can hit a golf ball standing like this. I mean, there was times when I was like, there is no way with your hand on the club like that, that you can make contact with the ball. And I didn't, I couldn't at that moment, but I didn't go, I didn't listen to that guy on my shoulder that says, Hey, go back to what you're doing where it's safe. What I did is I'm like, Hey, I'm going to hold myself to this higher standard of Mo Norman's swing. And I don't care what this feels like right now. I am going to learn to hit a golf ball from this position. I am committed to this process. And I know it's painful right now. And I know it sucks right now. And I certainly don't want to go play a tournament or go play with my buddies or try to make any money, but I've got to work myself through this. And, and what held me, what, what, what kept me going, which would you could call motivation what kept me going was that higher vision of great ball striking like Mo, 
right? The, the, the higher standard of myself in the future is what kept me going because it's like, I know this feels like crap right now. I know it's struggling right now. I'm getting frustrated, but I'm not, I know it's perfect. I must carry on because I know the future is with this new position. And if I, if I stayed on that track, made sure it was right where I wanted it. And I stand track. It's amazing. The level of competency that increased. And just to tell you a quick story of how that worked, I, I was hitting hundreds of balls a day. Sometimes I wouldn't even, maybe even a thousand balls a day. I was, I was grinding on, on my swing. I'd go watch Mo hit golf balls. I'd come back. I'd take a video of him. I'd study it and I'd, I'd grind it out in the range. And I was teaching myself. And one day I made an adjustment and it didn't feel good. And I, I worked it through and I was like, okay. And then I went back and I would study it on video and I, then I'd go make the adjustment again. And first couple of days I was like, wow, I'm really struggling. You know, this, this little adjustment is just struggling, but Hey, that's the standard that I have for myself. So I'm going to keep going on this level. And all of a sudden this is probably four or five days into it. I start, I hit a shot and the ball came off the club face harder, faster, better spin rate. I just, I could, I was like, I was like, and it made that sound boom. And I was like, whoa. And then I did it again. I was like, whoa. And then I kind of got the feel for it. And I did it again. And here's what happened. The shots I started hitting, it didn't happen right away, but the sh shots that I started hitting from that new position I'd been working on were so much better quality than I had ever hit a golf ball in my life. I was doing things, and I, this is how I, I tell people about it. I was doing things with the golf ball that I could never do before. I could, I could move it the way I wanted. I could flight it the way I wanted. I could, I could compress it the way I wanted because that change that felt so bad at the beginning that, that I thought, man, I'll never be able to do this. It feels so weird, but I stuck to it. I stuck to it. It finally came through. And I can't tell you how long that's going to take for some of you. I can't, I can't tech because I don't know, are you going to work at it? Are you going to really develop it? Are you going to, but I'm, I'm, what I'm going to ask you to do is you have to, in your imagination, continue to see that higher vision of yourself. And that's the standard you're going towards. That's what I, what I recommend. That is my motivational speech. If I have one, it's to you. Everybody's going to have a different standard. So you got to say, what is the higher standard for myself? And then you got to take that vision of yourself, knock that guy, that negative guy off your shoulder. And you've got to keep that in your imagination, that picture. And you got to say, that is what I'm shooting for. No matter how bad it is right now or whatever I'm going through right now, that is my higher standard. And I'm going to continue on the path to the higher standard. That's what I, that is how I would motivate somebody is I would say, here's the standard that I'm going to hold you to. And that's, that's, what I expect from you and I am going to support you. That's what my job is to support you, support the higher version of yourself. And when you fall down, I'm going to help you get up. And when you need help, I'm going to be there to help you, but I'm going to, I'm going to, but I'm also going to be the one that kicks you in the ass. When you start to listen to the guy on your shoulder, I'm going to be like, knock him off. Cause we got, we got to go. That's my motivational speech because I'm not, I don't think I can motivate people, but I can hold people to high standards. And I wouldn't expect that of you if I couldn't do it for myself. And trust me, there's plenty of things that I need to improve in my life that I look at and go, what's the higher standard for me on this? What's the higher standard? And look, nobody's perfect. And I don't expect, I don't expect myself to be perfect, but I always have to measure myself and say, is there a higher standard here? Can I, can I, can I be better? Can I do better? And, and on a final note, and this, you guys might find this interesting. I'm a, I'm a little past the age of compete, competing at this point, even though, you know, there's probably some fun stuff I could go play in. I had, when I was in my, in mid forties and, and even to early fifties, I had so many of my friends saying, Todd, get out and get out and play on the, on the champions tour, get out and play. You need to get out and play. You're so good. Go play. And I thought to myself and I, and Here's the problem I always had with competitive golf. 
winning wasn't important to me. And I know that doesn't sound very competitive at all. However, if I grew from the experience, that was a win. So to me, the only reason I played competitive golf and what I loved about it and what I find joy in is that I learned from it. Did I have a, did I have a growth experience? Did, was it helped me reach a higher standard? And by the way, you can't make a lot of money if you don't win. <laughs> so, so it was like, it's like, do I really want to, my, my, when people were asking me, you should go play. I was like, okay, do I want to use this as my growth experience? Because I can have that growth experience in business. I can have that growth experience teaching all of you. I can have that growth experience playing competitive golf. To me, it wasn't about one or the other. It was like, where can I grow? It's like, where can I raise my levels of my standards? Where can I, where can I develop? And you can do that anywhere in your life. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not, it's anywhere. So I guess my point is, is that, is that from wherever you sit right now, where I'm sitting, where you're sitting, you, you need to get out a piece of paper and I don't care how old you are. I, I was thinking, God, what about an 80 year old guy? What, what should, what should the 80 year old gentleman do? Well, we're all going to be 80 someday. Right. So, well, raise your standard, just raise your standard and say, okay, today I'm going to get a little stronger today. I'm going to be a little happier today. I'm going to be a little more, um, a little more pleasant today. I'm going to, you know, whatever, raise your standards and, and watch what happens. And as I wrap up this podcast and, and I'm talking to you today as a coach, help other people do the same. You know, the, the real goal here, the real mission and is to not only raise your standards, but know the people around you, what their standards are as well, and, and hold them accountable to the higher standards. There's um, some of the younger guys that I'm around. I had a, I had a coach, a golf coach, call me yesterday and ask for some advice. And yeah, I work with, I work with a new number of golf coaches in the industry, and I generally only work with the guys that I think are, let me put it this way, that have a real value to offer the golf industry. I think it's, it's a messy industry, kind of like the fitness industry, a lot of, a lot of stuff out there. And I got a call from a coach and he said, Todd, he goes, I, I got some, I got some questions for you. He goes, I really want to develop my business and work with people. And this guy's a sharp guy, he's a very sharp coach. And I said to him, and there was two questions I asked him. I said, what do you want? What do you see your future? What, what's your vision? Like what, what do you imagine yourself? And, and look, when people, when the people answer that question with money, I'm like, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Everybody wants to make money. Like that's, let's, let's go you money's not going to do it for you. What's going to inspire you? And he said, well, you know, I really, I like working with this type of person, which is developing tour players and, and high level athletes. I'm like, great. I'm like, great. That's, that's, that's a value. You're adding value to these people's lives. Great. I said now, and then he, then here's what he, here's where it got kind of weird. He said, what do you think? Um, what do you think I should do? And I, and I, I laid it out for him. I laid it, I kind of laid a little business plan for him. I was like, here's what I think you should do. Here's your opportunity. And I think here's how you do it. And, and he goes, well, what, what does that mean I have to do? And then I asked him this question. This was the most important question I could ask. What do you, I said, what are you afraid of? Like what, based on what I laid out for you and what I think, because a lot of people can't see their own superpowers and they have to ask the close people around them to know where their value really is. I do it all the time with people around me. I'm like, what do you think my superpower is? Well, he was trying to, he was asking me, what do you think my superpower is? And I told him, I was like, your superpower is dealing with these, these aspiring athletes in college and these, in these tour players and in, in, in helping them and developing them. That's your superpower. And I said, um, and then he, he, he got, he got kind of hesitant on it. And I said, well, what are you afraid of? And I go, you don't want to put the work in, do you? I go, you, you don't want to do the work. I go, I can, I can hear it in your voice. It's like, you don't want to do the work. I go, dude, you can't do it. You, you, you want people to do the work for you. And I, and he's like, well, and I said, dude, I'm, I'm calling you out. I was like, you, you want this. I know what you want, but you don't want to put in the work. I said, you're an, you're going to be another lazy guy out there that won't bust his ass. And I said, there's nothing wrong with that. I was like, be lazy. Right. But I'm like, you can't, you can't raise your standards if you're lazy. And I go, you just can't. So I don't know if sometimes I say the things people don't want to hear and I'm sure I do, but I, and he, by the way, he thanked me immensely. He's like, man, I thank you for just calling me out on this. Cause you're right. And I was like, well, I could hear it. You know, I could hear it in your, 
the way you're responding to me, I was laying out, but my job as his friend and my job as a coach and my job as a person that wants people around me to succeed, I have to hold people to high standards and I don't do them favors by letting them get away with laziness or not doing the things that I think they need to do to, to grow because we're here to grow ourselves. Why? So we can be valuable to everybody around us. That's my motivational speech for the day. I hope you guys find some inspiration in that. And I would love to hear your comments. Anytime you want to get a hold of me, you can always email me at Todd G at gravesgolf.com. Uh, also just to throw this out there, if you want my, uh, I have this, um, my Todd's practice PDF that teaches you the, the, my ways of practicing. If you want me to send that to you, just let me know, be happy to get that to you. And listen, we have a great school, a uh, fall schedule for schools. Please come out and see us sign up for a school. Look, you got to hold yourself to a high standard. It's time for you to, to not be lazy. It's time for you to, to, to do what you got to do to raise your standards in all levels of your life, including your golf game. And we're here to help you do that. Thanks for joining me again on the podcast. I will talk to you in the next one.